Question says, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Brother, what is the correct time of Maghrib prayer? Should it be praying when the calendar says time of sunset? Or must we wait till red disappears from the sky? Say yes or no answer. That is, if the prayer schedule has been accurately gauged and tailored to the time in which the rosiness or the redness of the sun leaves the sky, then you follow the prayer schedule because there's no difference. Okay? It's a means of finding out when the sun sets, whether it's the redness of the sky, a prayer schedule, or anything else that you use that is accurate. Okay? As for if you know the prayer schedule is inaccurate, if you have knowledge of that, then you look off of what Allah Azza wa Jalla also told you to look after. However, the question is, do you know how to look for the sky? Do you not look for the sun? Okay, especially if you have mountains. You may think that the sun is set, but it hasn't set. It's behind the mountains. Or it may be red, but because of the man-made uh, interference, airplanes, buildings, billboards, helicopters, all of these things, they play, or they play a role in a factor and you're not having a clear vision of the sky. So it's a yes or no answer to the question. If the prayer schedule is accurate, Alhamdulillah, go for the prayer schedule. And if not, go for the knowledge that you have, that you know, with the condition that you have knowledge. And don't think that it's that simple if you just look at the sky. It's not that easy. It doesn't have to be pitch black dark from Maghrib. It doesn't have to be extremely light. Wallah Question number Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Suffice ourselves with these last two questions from the sisters, inshallah. And the brothers, if you have any questions, we'll take them after the salah. Let me finish. 
or next week, inshallah. Question two says, brother, the Muslim women, the Muslim women come to the mosque dressed in black usually. Is the prayer best offered in all black clothes? Um, do women in Saudi Arabia pray in black clothes in their homes? As for the concept of wearing black clothes and not Islam, is it uh, more virtuous to offer prayer in all black? I've never heard uh, any hadith, authentic or inauthentic, weak or sound, say, stating that prayer offered in black for a woman is more virtuous. I've never heard anything like this, or I've heard any of the ulama people not say anything like this. Allah was best. I definitely wouldn't say that. Um, it says, do women in Saudi Arabia pray in black clothes in their homes? Well, I mean, I wouldn't know too much about that. <laughs> I've lived in Saudi Arabia for a decade, but I haven't been in people's houses and watched their wives and daughters and mothers pray. However, there is a way that we can't answer the question, and that is women in Saudi Arabia or Yemen or other Middle Eastern countries, they wear that which we call here in America prayer garments. They sell the prayer garments in the stores, they sell them in the clothes, in the malls, the places where you buy clothes, and those prayer garments, under any circumstance, black. They're always colorful. Whether it's red with flowers or blue, any floral, pastel type of color. Okay, so therefore that's a clear proof that that's what they pray in the house. They don't pray with black inside of the house. Now, we don't want to go on too long, we don't have a lot of time, we don't want to confuse nobody. Let that whole concept of wearing black. Does a Muslim woman have to wear black? We say that if there's a hadith from the Prophet, not from the companions, except from the Prophet, which Muhammad says, wear black, dress for black. Cover with black, be like crows, kata, 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 so on and so forth, then we say it's best to wear black. If there is no hadith from Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam encouraging, commanding, ordering the women to wear black, to dress like this, then we, under any circumstance, we are not allowed to say it's the sunnah for women to wear black. We cannot say that unless we have a legislation from the legislator. And the legislator is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. As for one of the companions said this, and it was no other prophet or something that they couldn't have made up themselves, then that goes back to the legislator. So therefore, the scholars of uh, Islam, they say that a Muslim woman, as we said before, she can wear any color that she wants to wear, as long as it falls under those general conditions and guidelines of the hijab. It should not be flashy and flaunty. It should not be something that is a means of infatuation. It should not be something that pulls and grabs attention to her. And if it does pull and grab attention, they can't see anything. And there lies no doubt, from, now I said not the only, but from the most basic colors, simple, humble, base colors is black. It's not too much to look at. Can't really see through it, okay? It covers, it's not an attracting, appealing color. No man is gonna differ. Red is not like black. A man is gonna naturally be inclined to look at red. What I know, at pink, at a bright green, at a bright this. Black is a dull, I mean, I'm talking about full garden now. We're not talking about this attire, this, Black, okay? Full long black robe. So for the sister, if she wears black or blue or green, a dark green or brown or gray, how do you die? There's no sin at all upon her. No one can say that she has to wear black and all those best. If they have proof, then they can bring the proof stating that they can only wear black or it's even at least recommended to wear black and all those best. Last question says, when one is fasting and showers, is he to guard against water entering his ears? Shukran. Uh, yeah, just take a normal shower. Yeah, I don't think it's a good idea to get too much water in your ears anyway. Before or after fasting. Not even that, but the way that Allah is of the masterful way in which he created the air. The air has natural protection against water. Okay? The air moves, so on and so forth. It's not just going to go inside. And if a little air gets in your ear or the inside of your ear, it's not going to break your fast. Whereas it's not penetrating deep into your body. According to that opinion, for those who are now who take the opinion, Anything that enters into your jof, your quote unquote insides, okay, your internal part of your body. I don't have water in your ear is not eating, nor is it drinking, nor is it sexual intercourse, nor so we cannot say that it breaks your fast. The things that are agreed upon by the Ulama are those three eating, drinking, sexual intercourse. Those are the things that break your fast. Anything other than that goes back to difference of opinion, kiyas. Understanding it, basing it off of this, so on and so forth, which is not directly clear. And Allah Azza wa surely knows best. I want to stop here. Unfortunately, we don't have enough time. Please forgive me, brothers. You may have some comments and questions. We take them another time. Allah Azza wa Jal Ha'alam. Subhanahu wa rabbika rabbi na izzati amma yasifun. Wa salamun al-musaleen. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Allah
size problems more quickly than size. Salat, salat, salat. Oh, this is the bicycle. No, no, no. 